Senator accuses Obasanjo of introducing corruption to the National Assembly. Senator Sumaila Kawu of Kanu South has accused former President Olusegun Obasanjo of introducing corruption into the National Assembly. And the accusation came in response to Obasanjo's recent claim that lawmakers have been fixing their salaries and allowances amid economic hardship in Nigeria. Kawa's remarks have reignited debates over the secrecy surrounding the salaries and allowances of lawmakers with the Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission, RMAFC, stating that each senator earns about 1.09 million naira. Despite this, Kao claimed that each senator actually takes home 21 million naira monthly, a statement echoed by former lawmaker Shehu Sani, who revealed that during his time, senator received 13.5 million naira monthly. In response to Obasanjo's claims, the National Assembly described his comments as uncharitable, with Senate spokesman Yemi Adaramoju challenging anyone with contrary evidence to present it. He emphasized that lawmakers' salaries are fixed by the RMAFC in line with the Constitution. Now, to have a conversation on this is Dr. Martin Morgan, is a public affairs analyst. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning. So, how are you, sir? I'm fantastic, thank you. Thank you for joining us this morning. All right, so we're talking about, we're talking about um, you know, the senator's salaries, the lawmakers who are making a lot of money, you know, with Nigeria's public funds, and they get about, well, one of them came out to say about two days ago that they get 21 million naira monthly, and a few weeks ago, the former president had said that, that um, these senators are just fixing their own salaries, their allowances even though they argue that they, their salaries are being fixed by the RMAFC. However, the RMAFC has said that 0 um, 1.09 um, million naira is what they get. But of course, the allowances are what you know, jacks up this amount. And when we're talking about the allowances, we're talking about newspaper allowances, we're talking about sitting allowances, we're talking about wardrobe, furniture. There are so many things um, when it comes to that that makes that amount 21 million. I just want to get your own comment when you heard this story, knowing that you are, you know, just someone in Nigeria, you're part of the you're part of the citizen, and you're seeing that the the lawmakers, the people who are supposed to be working for you, leading this country, are getting so much money that most people cannot even afford. What was your first reaction when you saw the story? Well, my first reaction was just just like the way everybody is getting is shocked. That is the way we are shocked because the situations in Nigeria now, I think uh, somebody should develop a lot of shock absorbers because some of the stories <laughs> you keep on hearing, they're enough to send you to the gallows. Or if you, if you are very close to a guillotine, you go and guillotine and cut off your head. And we have been seeing that there have been a series of, uh, a season of uh, one controversies or the other issues rising out, up and now and coming out. And uh, all these are the composite elements of corruption, which are, are in four phases. If you permit me, I will look at that. You know, corruption is not only embezzlement. Yeah. We have embezzlement at the first phase. We also have uh, misappropriation. We have theft. And we have breach of public trust, where you have been given a responsibility. So at this level of, the four level of this corruption now, for the Senate now, from this discussion in this context, to come to the fourth level, which is the breach of public trust. Thing. So what, what, what is telling more is that uh, there's a lot of uh, obscurantic way of operating some of these systems in Nigeria that are very detrimental to any other sensible person to think that, yes, really, whether we are really in operating a country with a democracy, a constitution, and a judicial system, whereby some of these offenders or someone who breaches the law should be, should be uh, uh, sanctioned. Now we are looking at 21 million versus 1 million. The revenue and mobilization of physical allocation tells you that this, this guy's salaries are 1 million, 0 point something per, per month. But the man tells you that I received 21 million. What is what's the correlation from 21 and 1 million? I do not see. How is it paying? Is it that every person goes and just draw from source? Just like a, a, we go to well, just use your pocket and put the well the way you like, you service yourself and go. No. Then the question there is that he, this, is, this man is at that age, I've been a distinguished senator. 
should be able to understand that this is what he receives. But then we are now saying that this is what he receives, and the other people are saying, no, it's including other allowances. And there. at this point in time, the Senator Kao, Senator Kao should be able to understand that there's a difference between salary and allowances. They're telling that monthly, I receive 21 million. And this is how it is. But the revenue mobilization and uh, fiscal allocation, who is in charge of fixing their own, they are telling that we receive, uh, we pay them 1 million. So which one do you take first? Is it the man who says he collects that or the man who says I pay you that? And it's very bold to tell you that this is what I've seen. And previously, we also have one other city senator say, say in his time he was receiving 13 million. So if mm -hmm. he has been receiving 13 million, has it so much degenerated to a point that now the Revenue and Fiscal Mobilization uh, Commission will tell you that this is 1 million? I think it's very obscurantic. It's very, very opaque. We are just shredded. That is that breach of public trust, a total disconnection about the realities of things and who is representing you. And this is where education comes in. Now, telling us that where corruption was introduced by the former president, Chief uh, Ulu Shegun Obasanjo, well, uh, it's, a, it's a subjective discussion we have to understand. Because they are now alleging on the fact that because he was into the, he, he tried to amend the constitution to like favor the him. Mm -hmm. Yes, to go in the third term. I know there was a distribution of a particular brand of vehicles, they call it Tetan Spirit. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. it did not fly during the era of Hali Naba, if you remember that season. Yeah. So I agree, those are things that are already up, but we are talking about the current situation. Is it 21 or 1? And another thing I'm feeling very, very uncomfortable is that in the tender assembly we have now, in this Senate we have, the, the opposition, what role are they really playing? To really uh, say that yeah, this is the opposition we are, we are talking. We remember in the same thing there was a period one of the sitting senators from Cross River State said, "This is S Y money I receive uh, for my own." But the other senior senator received more than that. And the matter that if you remember, there was this allegation like that that came out with that scene. So everything is shrouded in a situation whereby you find it very very difficult to understand. The more you look, the less you understand, the less you see. Mm. And this is telling us that, yes, we should be able to come and say, fine, it has come to a point whereby they need to publish the senator's allowances and salary monthly in the newspaper for the people to start bringing, having that trust. Because as far as I'm concerned, actually the fourth level of this corruption is a, a breach of trust. There's, with this type of discussion, there's a total breach of trust between the people, the senate, the management, and the agency in charge of uh, settling and paying them. Invariably, that tells you that everything's been orchestrated to the detriment of the man on the, uh, the, man on the street. We, we see that, yes, we are talking about a minimum of 7,000 living wages or a minimum wage, which is taking a lot of crisis, even up to now. Some states are not being able to settle it. So looking at it very well, it's not an issue of shifting the blame. What we are talking about is the current. Whether Mr. Uh, Chief Obasanjo was the one that introduced corruption, is corruption has a composite level on well, different. Well, with this things. now, isn't this you know, isn't this them coming out to say yes, we're corrupt? So um, it's always been allegedly that you know the the senators, the lawmakers, there's so much corruption in that system. Isn't this person, uh, you know, this senator coming out to say yes, we're corrupt because he has clearly said that um, former President Olusha Obasanjo introduced corruption, and now there are some people who are already corrupt corrupt, whereby the new ones coming in are also coming to a system of corruption. And now speaking on that, how can we start to weed out these people who are so corrupt in the National Assembly and, you know, even in politics in general? Yeah, it's not the first, it's not the first time you're hearing about corruption in the National Assembly. There was one senator in Dume yes. who also made that uh, allegation. There was another senator, this is Zingi, yeah, Zingi. the man that was he, suspended. He was suspended, right. Yes, all these are centered on one. That tells you that what the water we are drinking, we are drinking a very corrupt system of water, whereby we have to do. The only way we can weed up all these things, all this type of level of representation. That is why I keep on saying that uh, Professor Padora, he said, there's democracy become one of the worst form of government because nobody represents your interest wholly at 100%. Mm. Because we have done this system to a point that Everybody going to the National Assembly, they are going to live on their own interests.
So the only way we can do is that reducing this democracy and making it a part-time service. Let people not be there permanently. Let them also be fixed in the national wages and they have their stipend when they meet. Let them run their own private businesses. And that will now enable them to understand that you are only coming to meet at hard hoc basis and you get your sitting allowances or stipend. Because if you don't do that, you will keep on learning from. You know, there's what we call chewing the cord in science. When the, the calf will be looking at the good <laughs> after chewing, it will be watching. And any person that gets there will take the same thing. So if you if you if you read that the one is there's this uh, Senegal author Seban Usman, he said that most you should be my abuse that the main part. I will also in one of his book demand it. He said that uh, what we see in political system that whosoever come as a younger person, who's no so no, this is not how it is being done. Let's go to the status quo of embezzling. Hmm. When you keep on embezzling, then you go back to how it is done by the predecessor. But if it is a a king system whereby people are uh, shame and punish, people are mentioned. We see that yes, there's a, a recall process and yeah. it has been very effective. And we are able to see that yes, there's a monitoring system whereby there's a particular lifestyle you don't need to live above because if your income does not take it when you are not an entrepreneur, a businessman, you start ans being answerable to the state. And even like what is done in Japan or China in Asia where they have capital punishment for, for, for corruption. So all those things will simmer down a lot of things. But the first thing I put is that is to make our reforms and ensure that politics and politicking in the various assembly becomes a part-time job, whereby nobody is uh, consume from it because it's becoming too expensive for the state. They live on our state government houses, free cars and all that, on the opulence to the detriment of those who are representing them. That is why politicking becomes a do or die affair in our own clan, whereby a lot of uh, shenaniganism takes place. So we should be able to reduce that. Like you rightly said, I am an advocate of part-time service for all political office, exception of the certain selected office, like the office of the president, and a few cabinet ministers that were, but any other person, it should be on a part time basis. That, that is where the true federation you should be able to understand that yes, this is how it is. By the time we do that, all the tension and the crisis we are having, being a politician or whatever, it will reduce. Imagine even on career years. Now you ask children in, in kindergarten, what do you want to be? So I want to be a politician. <laughs> then you ask him why, so, so that I will have so much money. So it's not talking about the process of getting money because it's already been overwhelmed. Ask, ask, ask uh, kids, you don't understand. So this is where the problem lies. So for me, the National Assembly should be able to put their house in order. The Physical Mobilization Committee should be able to tell us this is what they are paying. And the Senator themselves will be able to tell us that this is what we receive. We should be in tandem of the legislations. So we should be able to now separate. Then those who collect constituency allowances and the rest, we should have physical example of, of what they have used that money or spent upon so that people will now have. And there should be a recurring process whereby if a senator does not do well, we will be able to call him back. And the opposition in the House, they should all not be united in taking up <clears throat> what is not supposed to be. They should not be united in, in terms of uh, uh, taking uh, scooping the honey. Away. So this, uh, we, we, I believe that some of these reforms will be able to, to help us. Mm. So speaking about the, the opposition, do you think that they are not even doing a good job? Because if you look at um, the UK, for instance, fine, I know it's a parliamentary system of government, but you see whereby, you know, the opposition, they have, they have a voice. And so they're saying things. So in a way, it is to put um, the, the people in power in check to be sure that they are doing what is right by the nation. The opposition in Nigeria, at what point do you think they need to rise up, even with the Nigerian citizens as well, to ensure that, you know, what, we're, not, we're not aiding corruption, if I can say that, because in, in a way, it seems like we have, we're giving them a loophole whereby they can take all of our taxpayers' money and they're not going to face any justice for it. Yeah, I, you know, like in the UK, you mentioned more all that time. Most of the political parties are based on ideology. And these ideologies are followed from A to Z, to the letter. Then you know that, yes, yeah, this is what we want to do. Unlike our own here, 
you see that people crossing from party A to party B to party C without ideology, depending on any government in power that you feel that is okay for you, you join. So the party continues like that. And when the party continues like that, it's so difficult to really separate this situation. Like what we are saying now, actually, in the democratic issue, according to Montesquieu, we should have a l'esprit de loi. That is the spirit of the law. The separations of powers should be uh, strictly defined. On textbooks, on the papers, we have all those things in place. But the implementations is what is affecting us in this country. That is why we are now seeing that there is no true opposition. When this current uh, political party were in the opposition were the other side, we really understand how the debate used to be. Very robust full debate, very insightful, very encouraging. The likes of Hali Naba and the rest, we understand a lot of people coming in Sam Amadi and the... Uh, the rest, he discovered that discussions are ba based on what you think. But when we start having this criss cross cut, uh, uh, is it a crisscross? <laughs> jump from one political party to another, you still maintain your offices and the rest, which is not in tandem to the constitution. So we see that there's a lot of breaches that we are not being able to amend in our own constitutional and political journey. That is why all these crises we have is that that is why also. During campaign, we only see we don't have proper campaign because our manifestos are copycat. We keep on copy, copy and paste. We paste it without really implementing it with our own spirit and mind. The idea is just that let me go. You, you just see a counselor living with you. The moment he gets to that council, he's not living at the choicest area of the of, of the city. This is what is happening now. We are crying a bag of rice is eighty-five thousand naira. But we are not saying that this is what is happening. There's somebody say I received 21 million, not one million. Mm. Is it an error of omission? This, this is oh. one of the explanations mm. they should be able to tell. But keep on saying, oh, no, it is one million. They might say, no, I received 21 million. At that point, they should be able to. In so fact, it is, it is being said that it's <laughs> over 21 million, but if we actually look at, you know, the, the breakdown of these salaries and apparently the allowances are also part of the of the mm -hmm. 1 million, it's supposed to be basic salary at 168,866.70 um, naira. Motor vehicle fueling and maintenance allowance is 126,650 naira. Personal assistant is 42,216.66 um, naira. Domestic staff is supposed to be 126,650 naira. Entertainment is 50,660 naira. Utilities, 50,660 naira. Newspaper periodicals, 25,330 naira. Wardrobe, 42,216 um, Naira point six six cobble. House maintenance, 8,443 Naira point three three cobble. Constituency allowance, which now has the huge chunk, is 422,166 point six six naira now when i did my calculation the total amount is supposed to be one million fifty seven thousand eight hundred and sixty naira one cobble so this is just a little chunk over a million how do we move from one million to 21 million and it's been said that it's over 21 million so that means you know the money that they're supposed to get in an in a total year they're getting it in a month in fact Less than a total, I mean, more than a total year, yes, you're getting yes, it in a month. That is why, if I if somebody has to take responsibility for that, right. the physical allocation and mobilization team they need to also understand that commission are they really doing what they ought to have done? If mm. they are not doing that, then you fire them, mm. you fire them, you just have to change, you don't need to start. That is the reforms we are talking. We need to be very strong in certain decisions. When we see a lot of lacuna in area, there's no need of talking and embellishing it because we use my political ally or you, you shift the blame. But like what we are seeing is the blame game. This one caused this. If this one caused something that is negative, do you continue with that negativity? That's the question we keep on asking ourselves. No. Then that one million and twenty-one million. This is for only one person. What about the one the one hundred and seven people remaining? Then mm. that is suppose that it's possible that those who they call themselves the senior member of the Senate, who have turned the Senate as a rehabilitation home and a retire home, 
They remain there for the past 16 years, since 1990. Well, they, they, will, they, will tell you, they will tell you to off your mic. <laughs> That's what they will tell you, off your mic. Yes, they will ask you to off your mic. Mm. Then when you off your mic, your brains are not. Mm. But then the question tells you that there's something wrong. Right. Honestly. This, I, I, to hope, I hope that we can get and this right. Sanitize, it's not I'm, I'm sorry to, to butt in. I hope that we can. Well, we, we just have to really go now. People, but I hope that we can get this right. This job. Mm. I hope that we can just... I hope so. Yeah, we can just look at it and say, you know what, the time is now. And I hope that people can rise up um, demanding what is rightfully ours because we cannot just allow these people siphon our monies. Anyways, this is where we have to wrap it up on this segment right now. Dr. Martin, thank you so much for coming. Yeah, bless you. Thank you, sir. Okay, we're speaking with Dr. Martin Morgan and he's a public affairs analyst and we've just been looking at the fact that Obasanjo, the former president, has been accused of introducing corruption into the National Assembly due to um, one senator saying that he receives 21 million naira monthly.